I have, I have. Do not. Ngangana na nina bagiako, please do. She's carrying a whole bag. How many, how many things are there? A laptop, a camera, yourself. How many? zone entry um, initiative you know I think I had only been to Rwanda where you just get there and, and you get your visa uh, right up at the immigration after you've landed um, but I've seen that many other countries have done this Ghana has done it and Ethiopia has done it and I'm actually in Addis right now and it was quite flawless you know um, I got to the immigration and it took less than 10 minutes to actually get my visa on arrival so you pay about $50 if you're going to be spending um, less than 30 days or 30 days and under. And you would pay about $70 if you're going to spend three months in the country. So they would ask you questions like how long are you going to stay and um, where you're going to be staying. And then that's it. You go head up to the next counter and uh, pay up $50 or $70, depending on the duration you're going to be spending in the country. And bam, you have your visa in your passport. And, and that's just about it, you know? And I think that that's where, you know, we as Africans should be headed or the African continent should be headed, you know, opening up these countries with more flexible uh, policies, you know, to allow Africans from other African countries to also visit these countries, because as you all know, previously it was easier to visit um, a country outside of the continent or even apply for a visa outside of the continent to a country outside of the continent compared to uh, one within the continent. So I think what Ethiopia and many other African countries have done, including Kenya and Uganda, is, is quite impressive. So if you are planning on coming to Ethiopia, it's going to be a piece of cake as easy as that is you just get to the airport um to whatever terminal you're at uh, go to the immigration desk there's a visa on arrival section there um the first guy on the counter will ask you how long you're going to stay the second guy on the counter will ask you where you're going to stay the third person will be the person receiving your payment and uh, slipping your visa in the passport and that's just about it strategic plan launch for the Forum for African Women Educationalists, launched by the President of Senegal, Marki Sall, um, and that is an organization that I am an alumni of, in this case, I received a scholarship from FAWE between the years of 2000 and 2004. countries that has the oldest culture they say it dates back about three million years so Ethiopia happens to be one of those countries with ancient culture ancient artifacts 
with churches dating back to the 12th and the 13th century, they say. So it's a really beautiful country, but it also hosts the headquarters of the African Union. And it's famously known as the diplomatic capital of Africa, just because it has so many um, United Nations and African Union offices. So there we go, we're here today, so out and about. for African women educationalists, um, board members, founding mothers, funders, partners, strategic partners, and the entire secretariat. And basically, they have been laying out to the funders what exactly um, the strategic plan for 2019 to 2023 is all about. And it's basically about educating girls and women across the African continent, um, FAWE is present in 34 African countries. So basically they want to push forward the agenda of equipping girls with skills, um, pushing for gender equality, and also among other things, making sure that girls can also take part in STEM um, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, but then at the same time, you know, just equipping them with the skills that they need to advance in the future. Because educating a girl child does not only help the girl child herself, but it's also good for the boy child in the future. Um, and I've said this before, that I'm a big advocate for educating the girl child, and that is pretty much because I feel that today, especially now, there's a lot of talk about, oh, you know, there's too much attention being paid to the girl child. What about the boy child? We need to have a forward-looking, responsive policies that do not leave anyone behind. And for far to reach me, it was a woman who reached out. It's very important for us to understand that while we think that attention is being given to the girls, there are many more girls who are stepping out of school, dropping out of school because they cannot afford education, their parents cannot afford education, or maybe they've gotten pregnant and they cannot go back to school because either they're taking care of families, but forgetting that there are other ways in which they can actually resume school. For example, through um, technical vocational institutions by rejoining uh, these vocational institutions to continue with school and there they do not exactly have to get all the form or uh, education they can also get skills education learning mechanics learning um, engineering you know learning all these courses that would help them gain economic independence or financial independence so I believe that there's still a whole lot more that needs to be done um, in educating girls so we know that when they are educated, even their offspring, when they get married in the future, will still be people who are educated. Now it's evening, we are done with the meeting, so it's time to unwind. I don't know what unwinding is on a Saturday in Addis, 
maybe if I get time, I will try and show you some of the places we're going to. But if I don't, I'm just understand that I'm going to be living in the moment. So, sorry guys.